And we're back! What a heartwarming tale of forbidden love on the Serengeti. For our next story, we have a very special guest with us. Thank you for taking, taking the time to speak with us, Dr. Madeline Welty. My pleasure, Bob. Dr. Welty and fellow scientist Eliana Stefani are two women on the forefront of science. Only a month ago, the Welty Stefani duo completed the world's first Stirling engine, a feat of engineering and thermodynamics. Would you care to explain further, Doctor? Well, Bob, I happen to carry a diagram with me at all times. How interesting. Would you mind uh, holding it up for our viewers at home? Absolutely. <sighs> this looks so complicated. Could you please uh, explain the different parts of it? Well, the yellow colored parts are made out of diet shake cans, a thicker type of metal which makes up the engine's support structures. Ah, interesting. You must be in good shape from all those shakes. Hmm. The other convenience of using a diet shake can for the pressure vessel bottom is that it is only slightly bigger than a soda can, so the displacer, which I'll get to in a minute, can fit snugly but without friction. You mentioned a displacer. Care to elaborate? Sure. The displacer, made from a soda can, is the most important part of the engine. It acts as an air pocket that is sealed inside the pressure vessel. The heat from the candles causes the displacer to rise and fall. So is that the main thing the engine does? Make the displacer rise and fall? Precisely. So why does the displacer fall again? I would imagine that the heat would make it simply rise and stay in place. Well, it would if it weren't for the engine's built-in cooling system right oh. here. The top of the pressure vessel has two functions, to seal the pressure vessel and to hold ice, which cools the air as it rises, making the displacer fall back down. Ice is a coolant! Ha! What will they think of next? So is this kind of like convection currents? Those ocean winds of lore which Arabian traders would ride to India in monsoon season? Uh, yes. Uh, very similar. Our engine uses different pressures to obt obtain from heating and cooling air to create a piston. A piston? Just like those pistons of law which... Yes, just like that. The most difficult part of the engine to perfect was the crankshaft at the top. It required painstaking precision in ensuring that the bends were all at very small perpendicular angles. The two hash marks on the crank, right there, uh, sh indicate an additional bend in the wire, staggering the push and pull on the shaft and allowing the engine to remain in motion. The other component of the engine that propels the crankshaft is a steel needle, which is connected... Oh, shoot. To the displacer. To the displacer. This needle makes the only hole in the top of the pressure vessel, a hole that is frictionless but lets no air out. That sounds intricate. What is that piece of pipe coming off the side? This piece of PVC pipe channels air into a balloon that seals the top. This balloon, inflation and deflation, provides a visual of the engine's motion and also perpetuates the motion of the crankshaft. So when are we going to see these in our cars? This seems like something someone could make at home. Unfortunately, Bob, our engine is extremely inefficient. The candles heat not only the air inside the engine, but also the engine itself, making it too hot to hold after just a few minutes. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Welty. No problem, Bob.